Hello everyone, Void Doctor 100 here, and today we're back on the Infinity Craft server for another episode of Infinity Craft, and we start this episode in our beautiful wheat field that I constructed last episode. Um, go check it out if you haven't already watched it. It's a pretty fun episode in my opinion. It's a lot of building. There's a pretty long time lapse, which I just really enjoyed editing to be honest. And oh man, I did not just do that, did I? Okay, but um. Today we're going to take a step back from all these building projects, all this building nonsense, and dive headfirst into technical Minecraft projects, which are some of my favorite things in the game, and I really, uh, I, if you guys haven't watched any of my Redstone videos, which there's only been a couple of, if not only one, because Infinity Craft takes the lead in my, you know, it's t my top priority because it's pretty much a combination of everything, building, technical projects, storytelling, pranking there hasn't been much pranking this season actually which i'm gonna change anyway but yeah so today we're gonna be doing some technical projects and the first project that i have really been wanting to you know make because it's so useful is a super smelter or also known as an auto smelter i'm just gonna take this iron uh make a hopper with it because i'm probably gonna need more of those um and you're gonna see why um, we need so many hoppers in a second, but yeah, if you guys haven't, you know, watched technical Minecraft before, you might, you might also know a super smelter as an auto smelter, if you, you know, watch people who call it that, so, yeah, I'm, we need that, we need a super smelter on this server, they're so useful, you know, they're pretty much the smelting god, <laughs> like, best way to smelt items, you know, it's like better than, you know, the blast furnace and smokers, too. So, yeah, and the first thing I'm going to need to do before I actually build this thing is find a location, but mainly hunt for the resources that are required to build this project because it requires things like hoppers, chests, which I appear to have quite a few of. Man, I have a lot of hoppers, and I, actually, I also have quite a few chests. So, yeah, there should be no problem in terms of resource count. It's the location of them in my storage system is what I'm concerned about. So, yeah, I'll see you guys when I, you know, find all the resources in my storage system, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Yeah. I, it, this might take me till next Thursday. I don't know. And yes, I can hear the redstone community rolling in their grave that I'm making a super smelter on, what is it? Like, okay, it's actually been quite a few days, <laughs> but that's mainly AFK time. It's... I've only played on this, I've only been online on this server for like seven, like real days. Okay, that's still quite a while. Um, anyway, yeah, it's actually kind of early to be building a super smelter, but still, they're very necessary, okay? They really are, especially when you're building with things like smooth stone and stone bricks a lot. Like, th they are really nice to have a lot of uh, furnaces that is not super smelters. You only really need one, especially with the one that I'm going to be building with just a 16x super smelter, a 16 furnace super smelter. Basically means stack of items in a total of four smelts, like smelting times, which is pretty crazy in my opinion. Well, after realizing that I've shamelessly spent 200 iron, over 200 iron on hoppers, um, without even really realizing it, think it's time to find a location in the village because I want to build some sort of you know, structure around this kind of like a casing um, around this farm to make it look a little nicer not a farm this you know the super smelter to make it look qu quite nice and also just add some lore I might make it into another blacksmith shop which means it would actually be kind of cool to have it near this blacksmith shop to add you know a bit of depth to the city where it's like blacksmith that's like this is like the blacksmith HQ and then this is just one of their like you know, foundries. So yeah, this would also give me an excuse to get some more blacksmith villagers in the village, which are always really nice to have around. So yeah, I think I might build it maybe here. Let's see, is this, does this, yeah, this definitely has more than 16 blocks of space. It's probably going to be more like 20 blocks, the actual building. So I'm going to need to plan for that, but hopefully this turns out well. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to get this whole area sort of set up for this big technical redstone project. Alright, so I've gotten the super smelter kind of prepped up here, at least like the frame for it with all the hoppers and the, like the input hoppers and then the, um, like the collection system and just the output chest. And now it's time to get our rails set up because I'm using the 
you know, the minecart design because it's a very, it's a, like the hopper minecart design because it's a, you know, it's a tried and true design. It's, you know, not using any glitches and I just realized I forgot building blocks, the normal void move. That's what you get on the Void Doctor 100 YouTube channel is me forgetting all my resources that I knew I was going to need. Okay, I need to go grab those. All right. So I've got the rails connected to the hoppers. Um, so this should, theoretically, if I power all these. Oh, shoot, I just need some ways to power these. And some ways to power those two. That one. Uh, come on. I'm gonna click on the side of those hitboxes. This is very small. We just put some. Ah! We just attach some some power sources to all of these and flip them on. Theoretically, this is just kind of like a test run. Put those on. And then if we place our hopper minecarts, which are down there, of course. Theoretically, they should go zipping down this minecart rail. Not super fast, but just fast enough to be efficient. Yep, this is working perfect. And if we test the other one, I need to get more careful with my elytra sometimes. Um, yep, they work perfectly. So, perfect. That's... Um, you know, our ingredient, and this is our fuel down here. So this works perfectly, and I, this, it's, sure, it's a loud design, but it's only, the minecarts are only going to be rolling when it's, um, you know, smelting something, hopefully, or someone might leave it on. But, yeah, this is pretty much the super smelter done. Now, all we need is just the input, and, of course, the building around it, which is going to be quite fun to build, but this is, yeah, this is, this is very exciting. I'm very excited about this super smelter we actually will get decent smelting times now hopefully all right so yes the super smelter is working like a dream i've had to move two of the minecart rails from there to over there so you can actually switch it off watch just switch it off and the minecarts will get stuck right there and that way you can also have them like refuel but um i'm actually out of fuel so the next thing i'm going to need to do is gather a lot of coal uh, I'm just going to do this off camera because it's unnecessary to do it on, like, you know, to gather coal on camera. But, yeah, and then I'm going to do a building time lapse of, like, the shell of that building. So all the buildings that we're going to be building today are, um, they're all, like, the shells, they're going to be building time lapses. So I can, you know, get this video to a reasonable length as well as not just also get, having some entertainment, but also not having the video be, like, 10 minutes long. Because that's not really, that would be, uh pretty boring video so yeah hopefully oh my oh my word okay I, maybe i shouldn't have gone in there anyway yeah i need to just gather some coal very exciting all right so um before i got started on you know building the shell for the super smelter i decided um that my storage system needed to be a bit more organized and i didn't know how i was going to do that so i kind of looked online and I found this method right here, which is where you just have, like, little rows of the blocks, and they're all one, and then you slowly fill them up. Anyway, I didn't figure that would need too much camera time, so I'm kind of just telling you guys that I'm doing this. Um, anyway, I'm so excited, because it means I'll finally have an organized way of storing, you know, items. So, you know, I got my seeds, I got my wheat, all that kind of stuff. Wheat's probably going to need more storage down below, so this will probably be unnecessary. I'm going to redo this, because I didn't actually think about how I was going to do this storage. And I'm also probably going to get rid of some of these items, since I have way too many saplings and things but right now it's just uh quite a bit of just it's quite a bit of fun reorganizing my storage system but yeah so once i'm done with this i'm gonna get on to the time lapse for the um actually no i'm gonna get on to resource collecting for the building of the shell around the um super smelter which works like a dream it's so fast anyway yeah so i'm gonna finish organizing my storage system all right so i've organized my storage system i've even labeled it i've even labeled what each of these chests are i was gonna put the signs on the item frames which um yeah it which just looks cool like behind them rather but the items like rotten flesh like beef and stuff and the pickaxe also 
they don't show through, so it doesn't look cool with them. So I just kind of put it next to the item frame. Anyway, this is a really smart storage system design. Like, I, this, I've seen this used by a lot of other people too, but just look, watch. See, it just it just works like that. It's, I mean, it's so simple. You guys probably could have come up with this on your own, but I am not an intellectual and did not think of that design. So yeah, it just, it also just looks nice, especially when you have them all sorted like this, because, because you know, with all these different types of wood blocks, you need a lot of storage for them, at least the logs and the planks. So you, like I have an entire row of a chest for each of them, which definitely takes up a lot of space, but it, and this is just like generic storage, by the way. This, this entire thing is just random storage. These can't be really sorted. And this is, and then this bottom chest, like part of this bottom chest is just kind of random storage. Why do I have so much smooth stone? Oh yeah, I was testing out the super smelter, making sure it worked efficiently. Anyway, yeah, speaking of the super smelter, oh, that was a great transition. Anyway, speaking of the super smelter, um, let's get working on that shell around it. I'm very excited for this because I've kind of devised... I, I've kind of been thinking about what I want it to look like and I have a I'm very excited I have a plan it's kind of an awkward design but yeah it, it, that's pretty much how the cookie crumbles with these kind of redstone contraptions anyway yeah th this is gonna be a third person time lapse but I'm so excited for this one because um well I'm actually be, gonna not be able to record the time lapse right now it's probably gonna be like a few hours later but you won't guys won't know that because it's gonna be cut out the few hours anyway but the reason for that is, is I'm finally getting a second monitor for displaying two Minecraft windows so OBS can record them because well it doesn't really work any other way which I really find annoying and I don't really understand why that happens but it that's how the that's how it happens and then here's all my ores chest I'm um one of the people who's on the server, one of the server members, Jinx, um, who's uh, who's lives on that property over there, with one other server member, they um, gave me a bunch of iron to spend on the my next project. So yeah, now it's or my next redstone build, to be more exact. So now that uh, that's pretty much well funded. Yeah, let's get started on that big shell. Or actually, no, I'm, I have to start resource collecting, but it doesn't matter because you guys won't know that. Only I will. And maybe the people who are in, live in this house with me and are going to see me chopping down about a million spruce trees. Giant spruce trees, though, that are farmed. I'm not going to cut down spruce forests. That'd be stupid. All right, so I have gathered all the resources for this build. And, man... That is a really nice, aesthetically pleasing shulker box. Like, you know, you got your stone stuff. Actually, no, you got stone, stone bricks, smooth stone, um, stone brick stairs. You got some regular stone stairs. You got your leaves, dark oak logs, spruce planks, spruce sta stairs, spruce doors, item frames, and torches. Um, item fra the torches go in the item frames. Hold on, we also need some slabs. I'll just use these. I'll just use those. Because I don't... <laughs> I've legitimately run out of space. It's a shulker box. It's... Yeah, I don't think we need that many stacks of stairs. And I'll just go grab some more if we do. Anyway, yeah. This box, this shulker box looks very aesthetically- Wow, it's nighttime. The shulker box looks very aesthetically pleasing. This is like all the items and blocks that I'm going to need for the shell of the building. And well, now let's use these items. Let's put these items to work and start building the shell for the super smelter. It's actually funny. I used the super smelter to get some of the items that I'm going to use on the super smelter. It's actually, it's actually really funny. I, the super smelter has come in so much handy recently for smelting things like stone. It's really a great design. That's why it's so popular. It's just, it's pretty inexpensive. There are some other designs that are a lot more expensive. Um, and it's also really, really fast. And it's also tileable. Like, you can make this as big as you want. It's, it's there's hardly any redstone wire involved, so it's, and that's just for this. Uh, that at least in my design so there's 
hardly any reason you couldn't make this like 150 furnaces if you wanted to. Anyway, now let's get building the shell around the super smelter. And why is it night? I gotta sleep first. Alright, so um, before we begin the time lapse, I would just like to show you guys. I would just like to do something very special. So I finally got my hands on a silk touch book. So we can actually name our shovel. Silky spoon. Because it's silk touch and it's a spoon. So Silky spoon. <laughs> This is this is something I've been wanting to do for a while just because it sounds so funny and it's it's one of those things where it's you know starts as the same letter. I'm forgetting what they're called. There's like names, but they're so nice. Yeah, let's get started with the time lapse. Yes, let's go. It's finally done. I think this, um, yeah, this is, this place is finally done. The, you know, the little, bl like, shell to this place is finally done. I think it looks really nice. That needs to be fixed or something. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. But, yeah, yeah, this place is finally done, and I just think it looks so nice. This place turned out a lot better than I had first envisioned it, but pretty much, like, the lore of this place is it's kind of like a black, it's like the found, it's like, the actual 
forge or foundry for that blacksmith shop. Like, maybe that's where they sell the tools and things, and this is where they make them. So that would explain why it has a much larger chimney at the top. Like, that's a, that, I, I don't, I think that's 12 campfires up there that make that chimney, so it's billing out a lot of smoke. Like, if there was pollution in Minecraft, this, the, this village would basically be creating all the pollution in the entire world. But, um, yeah, and then I've used a new technique that I learned for, like, stone brick walls, where you take, where you make them mainly out of smooth stone, and then you just insert stone bricks, and it kind of implies that it's a stone brick wall without it actually being a stone brick wall. But, yeah, I just think this place looks so nice. It, it looks very grand, and I, you know, added some greenery and things, but I, I just really like how this place turned out. It looks, you know, very impressive, and I haven't done the floor yet because I'm lazy and I didn't really have the, I also didn't really have the time before this video came out to actually put that on the time lapse because that would make the time lapse even longer. But there are still some things that need to be worked on, like that. That That's killing me right now, but, well, it's not actually killing me, but, you know, it's making me very mad that that exists. Anyway, yeah, but a new shop is actually open. If you guys are wondering what this is, this is actually a new shop. This is, what is it? What is it called? Mother Nature's Emporium. So basically it's just... Uh, one of the server members, Vista of Grace, um, she's just started base, and it's pretty much like a big pit, and it's like right now she's just digging out a big pit. It's a big octagon, and then she's uh, like, I'll, I'll leave you guys, I'll show her base when she's done, because she doesn't have a YouTube channel, so she, um, you can't really see it other than on this channel right now. Um, but this is her shop. She's, yeah, she's just selling all the items that she's collecting from this big pit that she's digging, or more of like a perimeter. So she's got smooth stone, which is going to be very beneficial for future projects. And then, um, she's selling cobblestone, dirt, and I don't know what's going there. But yeah, so that's the, um, super smelter done inside of our big blacksmith shop. And the second redstone project that I work on that I want to work on in this video considering that I pretty much based on how long this other one took uh, pretty much I think I only am gonna have time for two redstone projects and I also am pretty much already like I'm, I'm already quite tired so I, I I think I need a rest but yeah the second project that I'm going to work that we're going to be working on is a double automatic farm so it's going to be um half sugarcane and half bamboo i mean they're not going to be on the same farm but they're going to be in the same building so hopefully this works the way i envision it working but it's pretty much a very simple sugarcane farm design sort of like that one except it's going to be three blocks tall and the bamboo as well it's gonna be three blocks tall and they're going to share like the same building so hopefully this actually works and the redstone doesn't like somehow get caught oh my Oh my. Um yeah, so let's get working on the sugarcane farm build. Um yeah, first I'm gonna again like the super smelter, I'm gonna build the actual farm first and then I'm gonna do a time lapse of the shell around it. I actually might not do a time lapse of the shell because it's pretty much gonna be the same thing. So I don't think I'm gonna do a time lapse of the shell around it. I think I'm just gonna do I think I'm just gonna build it off camera? Maybe do like progress updates and stuff like that. Oh no. Okay, uh, I didn't somehow managed to not die. Okay, so yeah, let's get working on the sugarcane farm, the second rut redstone projects of this video. Yay, let's go. I'm I'm very excited for this. The one thing I'm not excited for is crafting all the hoppers and pistons and things. But that's what you got to do when you're building redstone projects. Alright, so I was just getting ready to name this place. I, I want to name it Hephaestus Foundry because that sounds cool. It also makes sense because, you know, Hephaestus, I'm pretty sure Hephaestus was the god of, like, blacksmiths or something in Greek mythology. Anyway, but, um, here's just an absolute, you know, whoops moment. I, um, I don't know how to spell Hephaestus, so I, I just pulled it up on my second screen. And yes, my second screen did come in. That's how I filmed that time lapse. So, it's... I, some of you, you mythology nerds are probably going to be killing me. Oh, wait, shoot. <laughs> I'm stupid. That, is that how you spell it? I think that's how you spell it. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, shoot. Well, that's wonderful. So, yeah, I, I hope you don't kill me for not knowing how to spell Hephaestus, but yeah, now it's got an actual official title as Hephaestus Foundry. I need to name all of our buildings now. No, I don't. That'd be stupid. But yeah, let's actually get started on the sugarcane farm. This is actually the redstone project that I've been a little bit more excited about because it's just, it's a little bit more complex in some ways than this. This actually looks kind of complex in and of itself, but no, the sugarcane farm actually looks quite cool too. So, yeah, let's get started on that. Also, I need to get, I also need to do the floor in here and fix that. All right, so I'm going to partially build the sugarcane farm out of stone bricks, but I came here and clicked on one of the furnaces as I'm getting the ingredients ready. And notice, somehow over the past couple of days that I've been working on this building and things, and just working on this in general, there have been 16 stacks of coal inputted into this thing. I mean, that's not too, I mean, that's not too hard to believe considering that coal generates in large veins and we have Fortune 3, which means we pretty much have an unlimited supply of coal and there's a mountains biome. But still, that's 16 stacks of this stuff. So, you know, watch the light show happen, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I love about this thing. It just, it just... Oh, that was already there. <laughs> it just plows through all the materials you put in it. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to finish collecting resources for the sugarcane farm. And wow, this side monitor is, a, is useful for things m more than just, you know, um, third-person time-ups. It's a great place to put my recording software. And why is my audio so loud? All right, so since I'm making the sugarcane farm partially out of stone bricks, I needed some way to get stone. And so I just decided to use the super smelter. Also, I didn't realize that there's already stone in here. This was already in there before I started smelting it. But I didn't realize that there had been 16 stacks of coal put into this thing in the time that it's existed. Not in the building, this like the time that it's existed, which is a few days now. So, But 16 stacks of coal is a lot of coal, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, let's get on to the sugarcane farm. And I'm almost done collecting resources, and this thing required a lot of iron. Like, I'm down to two stacks out of four stacks, so. It's required almost two stacks of iron. I mean, that's a lot less than this behemoth, but it's still quite a bit of iron. So, yeah. But I think it's I think it's going to be worth it. I think having this much sugar cane is going to be very beneficial in the long run. Hopefully, hopefully for things like firework rockets and the librarians over there who really enjoy paper. I wonder why. <laughs> what is this? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, let's get moving on this. Let's get working on the sugarcane farm. Well, I just have a comment on this. Whoever built this thing, you are a building mastermind. You, you, oh my, this place is amazing. This is much better than anything I th could have done, to be honest. Like, this place is really nice looking. I'd want to live here. Wow. Like, this is a really nice building. Alrighty then, so I've collected all the resources that are required for this big redstone farm, and I'm going to kind of do it in little progress updates, so when I've gotten the, you know, the sugarcane farm all done, then the bamboo farm, and no, I don't have sugarcane or bamboo, and I just realized that, I need to go grab those, and then I'll, yeah, I'll just do work, start the farms, and then I'll show you guys what the sugarcane farm looks like when it's done, and then the bamboo farm, and then we'll build the buildings around them, because... I don't think it would really work to do it any other way around. Or you could do bamboo farm first. But sugarcane always comes first because sugarcane is our money-making machine. Pretty much. It's pretty much a money-making machine at this point. It's so flipping profitable. So, um, yeah, I guess you could say this thing's being pretty productive because um, I just finished that top layer up there. And in the half an hour that this thing's been active it's already gotten me so much sugar cane i'm so excited for this thing like and, and what i'm more excited for is actually just I, like i'm not more excited for this but i'm very excited about the looks of this thing like most redstone contraptions you know 
They don't look too great. Like, let me give you guys an example of a redstone contraption that doesn't look too good. Uh, it's too much mustards. Very productive sugarcane farm. It's actually the same as this one. Um, it's got the same amount of sugarcane, so it's actually no different. But, um, yeah. But before you guys all start getting mad at me for, you know, b being rude to too much mustard, he didn't build this. I did. So if anything, I'm actually just insulting myself. And I'm pretty sure it does, I'm pretty sure it actually does matter that the sugarcane has some room, uh, room above it to grow. I'm pretty sure that does affect the rate. So hopefully the other one will be faster or I just made it unnecessarily tall without doing any research. But I'm pretty sure that's how other plants work is that like pumpkins, they need a block above them to grow. Or I'm just stupid and don't know how that works. I mean, the latter is probably correct but we just don't talk about that anyway let's get working on the bamboo farm it's the exact same thing except it doesn't have those little water capsules right there so it's actually gonna be easier <laughs> yeah the bamboo farm should be quite fun to make because it's just so simple it's this but simplified I i'm so excited for it yay the farm is done and can we just appreciate the size of this farm like first of all this this just is this just is nice. The growth rate of bamboo in Minecraft is insane. So you can actually get the bamboo. Like, the bamboo just... Oh, oh no. The bamboo just grows so fast. It's, but I think it's now time for me to design this building. Alright, so after, like, a very long time of gathering resources... Oh my god, these have so much value to them. Dark oak. So much stone so much spruce and so much wool and so much glass and this is how you all should spell wool now this is how you need to spell it okay just before we start with the building this is how this is just for the greater good of humanity all right so i just finished the first floor of the building and this place looks really cool all righty then the building around the sugarcane farm is finished um yeah, this place is looking mighty fine, actually. I, like, I, th I'm not going to say this is my favorite build that I've ever made because it's not. It just doesn't. It, it, it's a little awkward looking in some places. But overall, it looks r nice for what I was trying to accomplish here. And, we got, and I got it done in a pretty, n like, not super uber boring manner, which I just really like. And, you know, you got the kind of portcullis style door here there's actually lack or lack thereof um yeah i didn't intend it for it to look like a portcullis but that's kind of just a side effect of having fences at the bottom and then, yeah you got the farms which are decorated with the dark oak and then the glass which i think really looks cool even though it's supposed to be a medieval build i think glass actually kind of looks still pretty cool and if we go down here you'll notice that first of all we covered up all the hoppers mostly and then we have chests that are kind of just buried in the floor, which I think looks really cool. And then down here, you have just more chests. They aren't buried in the floor or anything, but this part isn't really meant to be seen in the first place. And then down there, you have a barrel and a crafting bench. Um, this... Oh, that's mine. <laughs> yeah, you have a barrel and a crafting bench down there just if you want to do some auto crafting with bamboo, which can be turned into sticks, which can be turned into... Which you can sell the villagers for emeralds. Which give you, which gives you lots and lots and lots and lots of emeralds, and emeralds can give you lots and lots and lots and lots of. Okay, you get it. Well, it, emeralds are pretty much my source of food right now. I, I mean, I don't eat emeralds, but I eat golden carrots, which I buy with emeralds. But there is one last thing that I'd like to do in this episode. That is something that I've been wanting to do for oh so long, but I haven't devised. A method of doing it yet until now and that is prank too much mustard or now bad quimpa in a way that will really really be obscure but annoying and i think i've finally devised a method that oh it's a jelly <laughs> that shouldn't take up too much like space in his base but should be so ridiculously annoying this is going to be very funny and it's actually going to utilize some slime balls that Vista of Grace gave me um, to create sticky pistons. And my goal here, well, you'll see. 
you'll see. It's it's very it's very funny. I have to get the materials ready though, and I actually have to prototype a design. But hopefully I can fit it within the space. Oops. Hopefully I can with fit it within the space constraints of too much mustard bad Queenpa's doorway. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna prototype a little design here and then I'll get back to you guys once I'm done. Alright, so in my redstone testing world, I've come up with a pretty sweet design. I was originally going to use observers so I could, you know, observers and note blocks, but I realized the best method is the tried and true, which is just good old redstone dust and a couple of T flip flops right there because observers will generate two pulses if you use redstone on them. So if you couldn't tell, it's a door breaker. It's a what he just walks in. There's no user input required and accidentally walks over those two pressure plates his doors are just gone this can pretty much work anywhere like on any implication as long as the floor is made out of something that a pressure plate can be made out of even if it's not like you want it's right by your door especially if you have inverted doors you have pretty much no reaction time like if you just bear with me for a sec here it just breaks your doors and you can't and you don't really notice it either like, by the time you swing your head around, the it's pretty much already, you know, it's pretty much already been activated. I mean, eventually they're going to, whoever your prank is, pranking is going to catch on and realize, oh, wait, hold on. There's probably some massive, overly complicated, over-engineered redstone contraption. Because, yes, I, I designed this, which means it's pro probably a bit bulkier than it could be. Just relies on the fact that doors, if the ground beneath them is moved or destroyed in any way, then they just get destroyed. So yeah, let's get building on the Infinity Craft server. Alright, so I'm at too much mustard to base. Sunflower's also there. Anyway, so I'm just gonna dig down a little bit, dig a big hole, and I'm gonna execute this prank. I think we might have run into our first problem. I th I wonder if he's used this. I wonder if this is something of his. But anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna continue on with the prank. I'm gonna I'm not gonna move this. It'd be stupid. Yeah. This isn't good. You know what? We're just going to hope he doesn't remember that that place is there. There. Nice and simple. He, hopefully he doesn't remember that that's there. And now I'm trapped down here. All right. So we have, um, this has not gone that well. It was, it, I, it actually was working, but then <laughs> bad queen, but kind of stumbled, stumbled upon it. And, um, well, there's not- there wasn't much of a prank. I don't know if I ever mentioned it, but I have but I do have pet cats in my house. A little farmhouse. I'm actually breeding them right now because too much mustard is creating a, um... Oh, I was, but then he found a cat. But at first he was just using my cats because he's creating a creeper farm. And that's how I got three stacks of gunpowder. Right now he's just running it with four of the layers ready. And I decided not to put it on camera because it's kind of his project. So I don't think- so it's- I didn't put it on camera. I haven't really done much work on it. All I've been doing is giving him cats. But there's one thing that I've been really wanting to do, and that is name my cat. Uh, shoot. Oh, there's nothing in there. Because um, I, I really do think this does look my like my cat in real life. My cat in real life looks like this, and her name's Luna. So this is now Luna. Although it probably should have been that one because my cat is absolutely tiny. Vista of Grace, um, being the great friend that she is, actually offered to rename my pickaxe because it's 34 levels to rename it and she has like 90 something levels because she's pretty much the villager trading master. If you didn't realize, she's actually been doing a ton of building and villager stuff around the village. But um, yeah, I guess with this kind of very happy ending, this is a very happy day, I, I guess it's time to wrap up this episode. I really do hope you enjoyed this pretty short but very fun episode and I'm looking forward to creating so many more fully automatic farms and just useful redstone contraptions in the future. So I do hope you enjoyed and have a good day. Peace. I'm out.